we'll start again with the different type of catalog, how that can be created and how that can be attached to the content zone. And then we'll see the requisition approvals, uh, what are the different type of requisitions approval and how that can be set up. After that, we'll see the descriptive flex field and then we'll jump to the sourcing today if time permits. So let's go to the application. And as we know the navigation that we go from procurement and we go to catalog, to set up the catalog. Now this is the area where we also set up different thing apart from catalog that is uh, creating the sourcing template, uh, sorry smart forms, creating a news, creating a public, public shopping list, information templates, all these things can be created from here. Uh, let's first check the different type of catalog that is punch out catalog. So what we were looking last time is, so we cannot have our own catalog as of now, so let's just go and see how these things are set up for Amazon. As we saw last time that this is the description and the name of the catalog that is Amazon. And below that, there are three different ways of communicating with the supplier website. So either it could be a CXML or it through XML or it could be Oracle Business Network. So below that, there is a bunch of definition. In definition, we specify that with which supplier we are going to communicate what is the supplier ID, what is the punch out URL, so basically on which site we are going to redirect and we are going to purchase or raise the requisition or we are going to add the items on the list and we'll have the pass password and over here this is the domain ID and identity which will be provided by the supplier himself. So based upon this identification it will allow you to enter into their website. So once we have all these details, we just fit in details over here Last time we were looking into the mapping sets that what are the different mapping sets are available. So we need to map the categories and supplier and unit of measure and to create the mapping sets. So supplier might have a different unit of measure and category what they are calling in their own website. But the things that you are requesting you might have a different category and unit of measure, right? So we need to have that mapping as well. And to do that mapping there is an, another task. So we went to the task last time, so from there it was incomplete. And apart from that, uh, there are four checkboxes that we can see over here, five checkboxes, that all prices are negotiated. So whatever we purchase from that particular website are negotiated or not, all price override, allow price override on the purchase order lines. So if we allow this, then we can uh, increase or decrease the price. Even if they are imported from the supplier website, we can override the price. Then process master items and the agreement lines uh, using punch out. So basically there is a feature that uh, something called where all the master items and agreement lines that you have that supplier can exactly replicate what all things you need. In case of pharmacy there are 10 brands or that could be 20 brands available for the same kind of medi medicine, right? So what supplier can do is they can provide you the same kind of uh, particular site website for you where you can go and request the different items that are already there in your master items. So basically it is handling of catalog from the supplier side rather than you are creating a BPA or creating an offline agreements into your own catalog and managing by your buyers. So over here everything will be done and maintained by the supplier himself. The Another feature which was newly introduced was disable automatic document sourcing. Now what used to happen is, um, just for an example, let's say if this is the same case Amazon. With Amazon you also have a CPA, let's say contract purchase agreement. And the same Amazon you are having and punch out catalog. So if you try and go and purchase the item which you don't want to count it in a CPA, and these are basically a separate list of items that you are purchasing. You don't want the sourcing or the automatic document sourcing needs to be connected. Basically the agreement needs to be disconnected over here. So you can disable, so if you disable this, so even if you have the agreements placed in your Fusion instance, the system will not con consider your item that are attached to the same supplier. So you won't have any agreement reference over there if you are checking or taking the items from the punch out websites. And this was again the new feature like enable item level punch out. So in this case what happens is that supplier might have list of items which you can go to their website and you can search the list of items over there. But apart, but rather than doing that, 
what if the users who are using self service procurement and they want to search that particular item on the fusion module itself so all the database all the pricing and everything everything of the supplier website is already available on your fusion instance itself wherever you are searching for the requisition where you are creating the requisition on that page itself if you get all that list of items if you want to enable that kind of feature that all the supplier punch out related items should be visible on your own web page fusion instance then you can enable this and based upon this we can upload that list of items and everything will be visible on the fusion page rather than going to the supplier punch out website so it helps just to search the items rather than going to the supplier punch out website and looking for the items so that is a new feature that has been introduced i think i think in 20 a and below this is the category assignment for the catalog browsing um, so if you remember the web page let me just go to that web page you might have forgot where we create the requisitions if we go to that page now if you go to shop by category basically this is the browsing categories if i click over here i can see this category called amazon so this is how it displays over here and i have attached this particular category over here amazon and this particular punch out related details should be visible under this browsing catalog amazon so this is how i just did the association of browsing catalog guys i am audible right it is not like last time what okay okay okay, okay. fine so uh, uh, just uh, uh, cross check that so that i don't miss out anything yes yes please okay so uh, so this uh, punch out uh, whatever you are showing it is just to uh, you know can we limit the, the the items that should be part of the punch out in that case it can be done uh, just uh, so this is the first step that how you are linking with the supplier website but after that if you just want to restrict that what all things uh, shall be available so in that case in case of punch out it won't be possible just a minute we can do it so what you are asking can be done that is one of the option but i was thinking of the other part uh, mapping sets is one of the option but again by mistake if your user goes and select any of the item which is not there in the mapping set that item will be visible on the supplier website so it's as soon as he tries to add to the cart and it will give an error over there so uh, when when you say limitation is i just don't want anything to appear which is not permitted on yes. the supplier website right? right so that can not be controlled on the supplier website but let me just uh, note down this thing i will think over it i'll take this into note i think that enable item level punch out can control that because what you are saying that is related with the local catalog that feature is already available but that is for the local catalog when it is when it is about bp or item master but over here we are just redirecting to other website where they have their own list of items anyways i'll just cross check this so yeah so what you were saying was uh, that item this item level punch out is a something else that the supplier might have the list of 1000 items right and all that list of items every time you need to go to the supplier website and then and only then you can search whether that things are available or not but what fusion has availed a new feature that you can take that list from the supplier okay that 1000 list of items you can upload that through this feature called upload punch out search items so there is basically one template and i can upload that template let me just download the resource so i can upload like the title date source description item details so i will just upload this list of items which i get from the supplier and just to make sure that all the requester who are searching for the item they can get all that list of items on the fusion page itself over here itself so if if i'm searching something which is not there in my item master list but it is it might be available on the supplier website uh, just for an example if i type pen the pen is not there in my item master but still i want requester to know that this particular is available with another supplier which all with which i am already hanging and punch out 
kind of thing. So over here what will happen is instead of cart, the system will show me go to punch out website. Okay. So in that case you will for sure go to supplier website but at least you will see the results over here. So you will know that this item is having an agreement or you are having a linking with the supplier punch out. So that is that another feature. Uh, but the thing that you are asking me right now that is that can be done through local catalog. See if I go to the local catalog. This is one of the local catalog that I give the name to it. Then I specify that if any of the items can be included excluded from the agreement what all item master if I include all the item masters or not. If I want to exclude any specific categories include any specific categories but this is only limited to what already I am managing it in fusion like BPA CPA item master related setups. But for the punch out uh, I have not seen that kind of restriction but sure I will check that. So this local catalog which uh, the restrictions or the controls that you are going to manage right now it will be applicable in this search box whatever the items that will search over here. So if I restrict some agreements then that particular will not be listed out over here. This results will not show that particular agreement or item or category related goods. So is there a way we can maintain a local catalog and then it can be assigned to a particular user login or a buyer so they can only see those many items? Yes, 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 yes. So this is the first stage where we create the catalog and once this catalog is created then we apply the security that this particular catalog is applicable to which user or which business unit that is what we can limit. So just for an example let's say if I created this catalog called maintenance so the next step what we what we do after the catalog that is manage content zone. So content zone is about like defining your security area just for an example if I go to this already created content zone I give the name and I define that it should be used in which area requisitioning or procurement below that I just add so this is the add button where I will add the list of catalog it could be punch out it could be local so if you see this the maintenance is the one and below that you can also add some by default public shopping list smart forms and if I go to the last thing secured by worker so if I say this that secured by worker then I can add the list of users who can only see this okay secured by business unit or available to everyone I mean all the business requisitioning business unit so that is how you can secure it. So all this feature that I am adding right now that will be restricted by this setup. Uh, now what I was showing last time that how you can attach the mapping sets. So in mapping sets if I click over here uh, for example if I want to map the mapping sets with the supplier I just click on add it. The file will be downloaded. Now what we need to do is that this Excel and to connect this Excel with the fusion instance we have ADF integration we have ADF integrator and this is by default you will be able to find under under the tools download ADF desktop integrator so if I click on this every instance can have their own version of installer okay so you just download from your own instance and once you download it it's going in error it should not but basically one software will be downloaded and once I install that that will link that Excel to Fusion instance so right now that integrator is not there or else the things will come over here the subpar category like this and against that I can have my own category like fusion category and I can just simply upload the data I can fit in this excel and if I go to data I just need to upload it the tool is not getting downloaded I will not be able to show you that part or else the tools like uh, tool like option will come over here where I will get the download and upload option.
I'll just note down these points, okay? I'll look into it because for this instance is not working. I need to take another instance. Similarly, the creation of smart forms. So there are already a list of smart forms. And if you want to create your own, we just click on plus. So you decide that this particular smart form should be visible under which business unit. You give a name to it. Let's say IT consulting. This keyword. So help with the help of this keywords, user can search the services. So you can type it like IT consulting services. So if users anything like any of this keyword, you can easily search on the requisition page. Apart from that, this is the same format we what we saw in the requisition page while we had a requisition line entry. So here you can decide whether the user can edit this or not and which all fields are editable and which all fields are freezed. So if I am selecting for the services, I can keep it like Oracle Cloud Support Services. Let's see if there is something. Okay, I think IT is not there. I'm just selecting any random category. Is uh, smart form similar to saved cart? Or template or Sorry, smart form is similar to what? Uh, you know, we, we can uh, keep the what? cart, right? Uh, saved uh, cart template. Is it the, some, something similar or it's uh, different? It is, it is similar to like, uh, you know, for purchase orders, we can have our own templates, right? Mm -hmm. So similarly, uh, in requisition, smart form is kind of a template that is predefined uh, fields that you have the ready templates for requisitions. So if you're having something that you are frequently purchasing it or you don't want the requester to change something or you want to have specific requests in a specific format, then you can use the smart forms. For multiple items or per item, or you know, I mean, I'm just trying to visualize how how is it something like a saved cart which we can buy every time a, a set number of items. Oh, uh, like so, no, Jimmy. For example, right, if you create in my request, right, in Cardian request, if you have a specific request like uh, you don't want to buy a pen or anything, but you are looking for some kind of support, like my desktop is not working, my laptop needs. Uh, Thing. So you can create a template with a generic which is not there in the oh, okay. uh, shopping carts or anything. Oh, okay, okay. That's what I uh, understood. Uh, so it's a, it's a, generally, it's a yes. Of, uh, saved as shopping carts, like you know, you can keep uh, buying that shopping carts, right? Yes, the business card. So one of the example which I gave last time that if you want to purchase a business card, so for printing the printing your business cards, you must be having one supplier with which you are printing. The, so the format is there with him. You just need to provide the detailed information of the person who wants to print it, who is the actual person, like CEO, CFO, manager. It could be departmental manager or any associate level person. So for that kind of things, uh, I can just fix all these fields. I can fit in these details one in one shot. So next time if a requester wants a business card, he don't need to go and fill in all these details. What he simply needs to give is, so below that there is an information template. I can use the information template just for an example. This is the standard example given over here. So under this business card, there will be extra DFF that will open up. It will ask your name, your position, your email ID, your uh, uh, like Insta ID or LinkedIn ID and things like that. So once whatever is required for printing the business card, all that information will be there that will be carry forwarded to the PO and immediately it will go to the supplier after the approval of PO. And like how, I'm like, that's how the smart form will be useful. It is something that, uh, 
requested don't need to worry about what is the service or category because it's a fixed thing can there have a multiple like you know so let's say i have to buy a, a 10 pens or uh, you know every time i do a requisition 100 uh, notebooks or uh, something like that so can i create a smart form or for all of them or just for that uh, particular one item maybe you can show Mostly, so I'm, I'm just yeah you yeah yeah you can do it for that kind of purchase as well that is of course it is up to you you can do that for that particular kind of uh, requisition as well but mostly it is used for the services okay. like business print business card printing is just one example it could be cleaning services it could be maintenance services electrical services but mostly smart forms are used for the service request and the one which you were asking for that we already have the shopping list so you can create okay. the public shopping list right and you can go there and just you need to enter the quantity you don't need to enter anything okay. so you can go and create that public shopping list as well so you can give the name to shopping list and below here you can add this like so every time this item with this suggested quantity will be visible on your requisition you simply need to go and click on add to cart so these are the predefined shopping list so this is how i can just fix and price is like this negotiated if i disable this everything will be freezed out on the requisition page i can just click on save and close it consulting so i just created one smart form and if i want this smart form to be visible on the requisition page now i need to go to content zone under the content zone i'll go to the requisitioning content zone and below that i'll go to the smart forms over here i'll just click on add it consulting over here i'll click on done i'll just click on save and close now at the same point of time if i just go on the smart form page let me just go to the home page and come again let me refresh the page so i can see this it consulting now so whatever i just uncheck the box all that are freeze i cannot enter anything over there only the item description was at table so i can enter anything over there and below i just had one template that i used but i am gathering the more information so i can have my own customized template as well it's not necessary that we have only this specific format but this is just an example you can have more fields over here and you can rename these fields so how to have such kind of information template based upon your specific type of request so to do that there is an option called manage information template so if i go over here i go here so already there are three information templates available so if i go and click on edit you enter the name of the template the display name instruction if there are any attachment categories that this should be visible to buyer or to supplier so as we are passing on this information they should be visible to suppliers okay and the important thing over here is attribute list so basically the attribute list is dff okay so these are all context based dff so we can see, we'll see in the next step how to create the dff and the context based dff for specifically for information template and that particular list will be visible over here so if you see this right now the business card information list is selected over here so at the same point of time if i go and see i'll go to setup and maintenance under the setup and maintenance just choose your scope to procurement and just type information 
descriptive flex field. Now this is the place manage information template descriptive flex field. So I'll go to this task. Now the concept is same over here, same as EBS. You can have the global DFF or context-based DFF. I, I go and click on edit. Now if you see this, this is the global segment. And under the global segment, I can click on plus and all that global DFF I can open up over here. But if I want to open the context-based DFF, these are the same thing which we are looking on that page right now. Name, title, address, email address. But if I want to create this context-based DFF, I go to manage context. So you can create your own, but already there are predefined. So let's add one more segment over here. Let's call it like, I need LinkedIn ID as well to print. data type is character so automatically the table column will come over here so if you want to change the attribute you can just click on that attribute and change it now value set now if I want to use the free text so I already have the predefined free text available so I can use as per my character limit so this is a free text with no validation so this is a standard free text available and below that I can decide what should be the prompt whether it should look like text box or a text area so I'll keep it text box drop down so there are many options available so I'll just keep it text box and I'll just limit the size to 20 so once I do that I'll just click on save and close I'll save and close. Again, I will save and close and deploy the flex field. So we'll wait until it is deployed. So I can go to home page, just requisition, and go to IT consulting. And let me just log out and log in again. So you can see this, the LinkedIn ID, a new field has been added over here. Can, can we put some validation? Can we assign some validation? Uh, for example, mm -hmm. uh, can you give me some example? Um, no, LinkedIn may not be a, oh, okay. So that is a free text, same, same as a DFF, like a value set. Yes, validation. yes, that's okay. yes, yes, that's a DFF. So even you can have the value set. So if we define the value set over here, then in that case, we have the same kind of option which we used to had uh, during the EBS. Now let's just see this task in the requisition DFF only rather than
So we just uh, had an overview like um, how the things can be set up for punch out and local catalog and once that is created how that can be attached to the content zone and what is the different way that security can be applied how the smart forms are created and uh, how the information template can be attached over there.